We are very pleased to have the pleasure of welcoming Omer from Florida State University College of Business, where he's an instructional technologist. And he has a really exciting session for you today around annotating the syllabus. So um, I see we have someone from St. Paul College. Welcome. Uh, so I'm going to kick it off to Omer. Thank you, Kara. And Welcome to the last session of Annotate at 2024. And in this session, I will be um, talking about students' syllabus use and some of the studies on syllabus design in higher education contexts. And then I will introduce syllabus annotation assignment which is an assignment that I learned in one of the workshops organized by Hypothesis. I will talk about my experiences, how I shared this activity with others, and then how I designed this activity on Canvas, and some of the questions that I got from others when I introduced this activity. And I will also talk about some of my goals and plans to implement this activity in online courses. So when we look at students' syllabus use, um, in an advice column, Tom Deans talks about how um, students use their syllabus and Tom learned that most students simply stop reading the course syllabus on page two, especially if it is um, a multi-paged syllabus. Even the high achievers um, roll their eyes when they receive a multi-paged syllabus. And this observation aligns with a recent study in which John Kerrigan and Christina B. Folko found that uh, many students in the graphic syllabus group didn't access the page and didn't interact with the syllabus content. And these observations and studies uh, complement course instructors' beliefs um, about, student, about how students use syllabus. Um, which is students never read or look at the course syllabus. However, an earlier study found that some of the students actually look at the syllabus in their psychology course, either that day or the day before. And some of the students look at and walk through their syllabus to learn about the course learning objectives as found out in another study. So these observations and studies address tensions around course instructors' beliefs about what students can do, what they actually do, and what they should do with the course syllabus. And these studies also address uh, tensions around students' beliefs about what they can do, what they actually do, and what they should do with the course syllabus. So to resolve these tensions in the classroom, there are also studies, uh, researchers, faculty members, who implement some innovative approaches and strategies, um, such as using visuals to promote information retention and inclusiveness. There are also studies in which researchers explore the use of infographic satire visual syllabus on student perceptions and how they perceive um, the overall course, the course instructor, um, and they also explore students' uh, feelings about the overall course structure as well. And this is another um, study, or I should say instructional note, in which the course instructor used mind maps to promote interaction and student engagement with the syllabus content. 
And in a recent study by John Kerrigan and Christina Bifolko, which is published in 2013, they explored the use of videos um, to promote active student engagement with this syllabus. And these kinds of initiatives um, are common in the higher education contexts as well. And at this point, I would like to focus on um, John Kerrigan's and Christina Bifolko's study. They discuss that even though they collected metrics on views of the gra graphic syllabus, they mentioned that they still don't know how much students engaged with the syllabus. And they recommended that students can annotate the graphic syllabus with questions, comments, external links, and re reply to peers, which might, which might help students master the syllabus content to better prepare for the class. And they also recommend that students can use an annotation tool um, to be better prepared for the class. And one of those tools was Hypothesis. And at this point, I would like to introduce syllabus annotation assignment, again, which is an activity that I learned in one of the webinars organized by Hypothesis. And this assignment is available on um, Hypothesis website. There are some instructions here about how to facilitate this activity. And as you may see, um, course instructors can make adjustments um, to these instructions depending on their needs and goals in their classrooms. And they can also adjust um, the um, grading scale or how they would like to grade or not this activity. There are also instructions for students in this assignment. Um, and on the website, we have added at least two annotations. But again, um, this is up to the course instructor. This is um this will this might be a great start if you would like to implement this assignment um and there are more details about those annotations so students can ask a question about something that is unclear or confusing on the course syllabus or they can comment on a topic or assignment that they are looking forward to and explain why and they can also reply to their classmates in their annotations, uh, which would uh, initiate a learner-learner interaction as the course begins. And there are some details here about using hypothesis when annotating. Um, there are three tips here that will help students to make sure that they are posting their annotations um, in the classroom and um, they select this class, uh, but not post to only me option. And so we, we can provide more information here depending on students familiarity with this um, annotation tool. So my experiences with this assignment started um, last December um, when I noticed a workshop information through um, Hypothesis newsletter. And at the time, I remembered that um, it sounded interesting to me, especially annotating the course syllabus early in the semester to initiate dialogue with the students, to address their concerns or questions if they have. And I attended this workshop and Christy shared so many great resources at the time. And this activity resonated with me, uh, particularly because it, um, learners are able to interact with their faculty members or their course instructors um, as they annotate. Um, and they can also interact with their classmates, and they will be interacting with the course content as well. So 
just with this activity, learners are able to interact with uh, multiple different um, course elements, including faculty, course content, and their classmates. And after this webinar, I immediately shared this activity with two faculty members that I have been working closely, and I also included some of the links and resources that Christy shared in that webinar. And one of them found this activity uh, interesting. I think she was not uh, familiar that hypothesis can be embedded within the Canvas or other LMS platforms. And she also noticed that students um, do not need to sign in to this external tool, which is, um, I believe, makes this a little bit more easier for students to get started with the activity. And I still didn't figure this uh, out that one of the other faculty members shared. But I think they have multiple different sections. And she mentioned that the students are separated and cannot all see each other and interact. I was not familiar with that problem and I didn't look at it, but that is something um, that I will be exploring if she wants to implement this activity. So after that webinar and talking with those two faculty members, I created that activity on Canvas using one of the templates that we have here in the Florida State University. And we have introduction here, hypothesis tips, and what to do directions for students, as indicated in the website, and important notes about annotating. So, as indicated in the website, you can adjust these directions as you wish. Uh, in this activity, for example, we designed this as an optional um, activity, which is not graded and doesn't count toward students' final grade. And then we added these um, resources in case students uh, want to explore how they can annotate course content. And there are two links in this section. And um, it doesn't take a lot of time, even if students are not familiar with this tool. But um, these resources would be helpful for students if they are new to annotating and uh, using hypotheses. And there are some more directions for students here, um, adding at least two annotations about the course syllabus, asking questions, commenting on some of the assignments, and maybe even replying to classmates and their questions as well. And there are some important notes about annotating on syllabus here. So after designing this activity on Canvas, I shared this activity with two of my colleagues and they liked the idea of annotating the course syllabus at the beginning of the semester. And they also appreciated um, knowing that there is a tool that is available here in our university for social annotation. And then I also shared this activity with seven course instructors. And I recently shared with two more faculty members as well. And two of them didn't share any ideas about this activity. And they were not willing to learn more and collaborate um, on this idea. And five of them liked the idea of annotating the course syllabus with an available tool again. Um, but when I was in that meeting, they have already planned their courses for the spring 2024 semester. And they didn't have time to play with hypotheses and implement the activity in their courses which would be uh, starting in two days. 
So some of the questions that I received as I was talking about this activity with my colleagues, with some of the faculty members, is that whether they should design this activity as a graded or optional activity, which is, I believe, a common design concern that I have been hearing in this conference as well. And Jason, in Jason's presentation, uh, we talked about how long should we make this activity available to students and it is possible that uh, there will be times later in the semester that the course instructor will refer students back to course syllabus and students may even benefit from others annotations as they walk through those annotations but available to dates um, is one of the design um, concerns that um, I received a question about this activity. And one of the most interesting approach was about um, the instructor labor, um, because most of the time assigning course syllabus just as a reading activity seems to be not creating a additional labor for the instructor but with this type of an activity um, i heard that instructors need to monitor student comments and questions if they have um, questions instructors need to answer their questions maybe connecting them with the university resources if students uh, are asking for that type of uh, question and maybe even they would need to revise the um, portions of the syllabus based on students' needs and questions. Another point about instructor labor is that not many instructors are familiar with the social annotation tool hypothesis. Um, even though um, it is um, easy to use and doesn't really require uh, much um, labor when setting up this assignment, um, I think that's also a concern when introducing this activity to other faculty members and which also impact um, design um, decisions. Um, and when introducing or implementing this activity in online courses. So some of the um, next steps that I will be uh, looking for is that I will keep sharing this activity with faculty members, especially with those who are looking for new ideas and more active learning strategies in their courses and who tend to care more about their students' needs and concerns. And I am hoping to collaborate with some of the faculty members here and implement this activity in online courses. It will be really interesting to collect and analyze student annotations and how faculty members are reacting to students annotations. And hopefully I will be sharing the results of these efforts and initiatives in next year's um, conference organized by a hypothesis that will be um, helpful and informative to see how students and faculty members are reacting to this kind of an activity. These are some of the references about syllabus design, how students use the course syllabus that I used in my presentation. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, and if you have any questions, I would love to answer. And that's all I have, Kara. Awesome. Thank you so much. We can't wait to welcome you back to Annotate Ed 2025. Um, I know we have a question from someone in the audience. They're asking how we can get the slides. Do you happen to have a link to the slides that we could share? Um, not that I created, but I am happy to 
share my slides um, with you, Kara, and then yeah, that's perfect. perfect. I can do that for sure. Awesome. All right, great. Well, everyone, thank you so much for attending Annotate Ed 2024, and we look forward to welcoming you in 2025. And thank you so much, Omar, for this great presentation. I can't wait to see you again. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks all. Bye.